How to build a business while still in full-time work is totally possible, so stick around. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today I want to talk to you because it's a question I get asked all the time. How do you start a business while you are still in full-time work? And then the follow-up question is normally, I want to start one, but I haven't got a clue. So I'm gonna give you some step-by-step -step processes in which you may want to follow. So let's kick this off with, normally most people will say, I wouldn't start a business because it's risky certainly riskier than employment. That's what most people say. If anyone's seen my street interviews, I ask a lot of people, what do you think is riskier, employment, staying in there, or going and starting a business? And most people typically will say, well, starting a business is riskier. And there's this old saying, and I do say it's an old saying now because it's dramatically dropped, which I'm gonna explain in a minute. Most people say, well, most businesses fail within the first year or 90% of businesses fail in the first year. That's now not true. So I'm gonna share something with you. So a survey done by Lending Tree now shows new data up to date 2023 that that has dropped to 18.4% of all businesses failing within the first year. So when you hear people say most new businesses fail or startup businesses, that's now incorrect. 18.4%, it's very low. And why is that? Well, let's just address it. So we can start a business from home sitting on the couch with your phone or with your laptop and basically have no overheads. So that is where the risk has been massively reduced. You don't have to have employees from the off. You don't have to have a warehouse, an office, printers, computers, outgoings, tax advisors, accountants. You don't need that from the off. You can literally start from your laptop, social media, branding, and you're good to go. And then it's all about sales and marketing. So I just wanted to address that. It's dropped to 18.4%. So if you are in full-time employment and you're doing, let's just say 40 to 50 hours, Okay, there's still some hours yet to be put in during that week because although we think we go to work and that's it, we come home, we eat dinner, we go to sleep, we should be looking at this as how many shifts can we do in one day? So for example, if your time management isn't that great, you may want to relook at it. So reevaluate where is your time going? Are you spending too much time scrolling on social media? Are you more of a consumer? Do you watch Netflix quite a lot? Do you go out with your friends down the pub, whatever it might be? All of this needs to be recalculated, addressed and changed because time is what you need back in order to start a business whilst you're still in full-time employment because we've all got the hours and if you say you haven't that's just excuses so look where you can gain hours back within the shift that you work and what i would say if you are doing shift work that's awesome because i used to do four on three off i used to start late afternoon until sort of midnight so i had great hours in which i could put into building, which is now my main business. So now the next step is to look and be honest at your finances. Where's your money going? How much are you bringing in? What's going out? Are you in debt? Are you not in debt? Do you have an emergency fund, a maintenance fund? a floating fund. And that is essentially money that will be able to keep you afloat if you do decide to leave your job and start a business. Although I do recommend that you start this whole process whilst in full-time employment, but have your finances set up because it's going to give you a nice buffer and that extra comfort just in case there's a few hiccups along the road. And believe me, there will be. So if you are in debt, I wouldn't say that you're going to be wanting to take on more debt. You're going to want to start a business that doesn't need any upfront capital. So be honest with your finances, look where your money's going, re evaluate and try and recoup as much money, stick it in a floating fund so you've got a nice buffer to get going with your new business. Now, when starting a new business, we all get that fiery feeling, that exciting sort of buzz around starting a business and it's going to be great and things like that. And what do we typically do as humans? We get like this dopamine hit where we want to start telling people because for some reason, as human beings, we love to tell everyone our plans, what we're up to, our secrets, you know, what we did at the weekend. We just can't wait to tell people what we're up to. What I would say is if you are going to start a business whilst in full-time employment, you need to stay hush. Don't tell people in your employed role, your work colleagues, because two things are going to happen. One, they're either going to go around telling everyone, which could jeopardize your chances. There may be a conflict of interest, but what I would say is most likely is actually you're going to cause an emotion in that person that may have been in that business or that employed role for quite a while and hasn't got the guts or the initiative or the drive or ambition to go start their own business. And what you might do is you might reveal an insecurity in them where they don't like the fact that you're talking about having something so much bigger than just a job, which is fine, by the way. You know, I've done 10 years in employment. It's absolutely fine. Some people just like to go in to do a job and that's absolutely fine. But if you do have ambitions, I just wouldn't go telling everyone about it because it's likely that they're going to jeopardize your chances and there may be a conflict of interest which could cause you problems. Following on from this, before you even get into your business model, the second step is to then block people on social media. And the reason you do this is 
is you just want to reduce the exposure from your employed role to what people can see what you're doing outside in your spare hours. Because we've covered that gaining the time back, your hours are being put in outside of work into your new business, but you don't want people from your work seeing that because they may start talking about you. They may be judgmental and they may talk to people again that could ruin your chances of that business being a success from the off. This video was proudly sponsored by MentorMe, the UK's first vetted mentoring marketplace where you can accelerate your entrepreneurial journey and discover your first mentor. Go check them out. All the links will be in the description below. Now, straight away, you're going to want to get into networking. Start meeting business owners, to be business owners, successful business owners, those who have been there and done it, those who are just on their journey, those who have jumped the hurdle that you're just coming up to. Start networking with incredible people and swap your circles. This is so important for any business to be successful. Business is all about people. You're going to like some people. You're not going to like some other people, but it is a people's game. So the more people you know who are in business and that have been successful, but also had failures, their downfalls, you need to learn from all these types of people. So if you're a pub goer, if you like going out on a Friday night or you're with people that waste time, swap that circle and start networking. There's plenty of them. Go to London, go to breakfast, business meetings, seminars, you name it. Start surrounding yourself with people who are in business full time and the trajectory for you doing very well in your new business will take off. Now, what business do you start? So this is, if I had a pound for every time I was asked this, I would be a multi, 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 multi millionaire. But I can't answer that for you. What I can say is you need to think about certain things when starting a business. Typically, businesses now are online. Okay, so most businesses that thrive are all online, they're digital, they're passive, and they're scalable. So when you are thinking, right, okay, what am I going to start? Physical businesses such as shops, cafes, you know, warehouses, stuff like that. Yes, they can be successful, but you limit your chance of one scalability, growth through another pandemic, you know, worst case scenario, and you limit your audience. You know, if you have a warehouse and you have a logistics business, you can't serve someone who's in Korea or America or Dubai. It's very unlikely because it needs that, you know, logistical travel for whatever you're doing to get there. You know, unless you're doing like drop shipping, I'm not talking about that, but I'm on about a physical business is very hard to scale and reach a new audience. A business now to be successful and earn a lot of money, you need new eyes all the time. So that's typically through social media, a good SEO campaign, you know, paid advertisement perhaps, but using social media is the best way as a free resource where you can start telling people about your business. So that's what you're going to need to do. So set up your socials. I would then urge you should start looking into a non-physical product, which is a digital asset, which can be sold to everyone. So what does someone want two, three times a month? Or what does someone want two, three times a week? Is it a product? Is it a service? Is it a consultation? Is it you doing it? Is it someone else who you've trained that can do it? How can you serve people every single week, every single month, reoccurring all the time? That's what you need to start thinking about. And if you haven't got to that point yet, then I'm going to take it back a step and you need to look at yourself in the mirror and say, am I knowledgeable enough to even start this business? which is going to tie me on to my next point. Education is truly the key to being successful in business. If you know nothing, quite literally nothing about business, finance, investing, entrepreneurship, how are you going to run a successful business? So get educated, keep learning every day, learn on your commute, learn in the gym. And that is one of the biggest things that will push you towards success in your business when you finally figure out the model is your education in yourself. Become that ball of knowledge that will drive your business through. Now, finally, for any business, to work while you're still in full-time employment and to get yourself out of that position if that's what you want to do is you need to have an awesome social media marketing campaign running all the time. New eyes is what will make your business successful. So when you are in full-time employment, you need to find those gaps that you can still be pumping out social media content, value, plugs, click funnels. You need to bring an audience in all the time through multiple platforms. That could be YouTube Shorts, TikTok, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitch, Snapchat, running email campaigns. So you need to make sure that you're structuring a social media marketing campaign all the time, seven days a week, every single month and running that all the time because that is what will make you successful. As soon as you take the foot off the pedal, that's when people are going to sort of start dying off. And they're not going to know about you. So that is your quickest way to starting a successful business and getting yourself out of that full-time job is running good, heavy sales, social media marketing campaigns. So hopefully this has given you an idea on how you can go about starting a business while still in full-time employment employment at these ways that I've explained to you is exactly how I've done it. Please do like, leave a comment, subscribe for more, and I'll see you all very soon.